G'day, I'm Joel Gelding. Welcome to The Tackle. I've been told I look a lot like Stephen Curry from The Castle. I can see it right now. Yeah, I can. I don't see it at all. I think I'm a lot better looking than him. Well, he's better looking than me. Well, I've been told that I look like Shannon Knoll, so there you go. Well, we didn't want to bring that up on the tackle, but now that you mention it, Sean, uh, both number eight, both very similar looking. Uh, one had really? spent two weeks in Bali tanning it up and has blonde hair. The other, pretty pasty, got a few extra kegs on him and has <laughs> half a sleeve and black hair. What happened there, mate? I don't know, but I'm happy to move on for that. I'm pretty confident I don't look anything like Shannon Knoll. It's probably better to... Uh, he'd be happy with that, I would have thought. I'm sure Nathan and Nat are happy to move on as well. They won't be bringing it up ever no, again, worry. mate. I'll let it go. Uh, if only we had a highlights reel from your match at the EJ Witten's game. I thought you were superb, mate. Best on. Robbed. Uh, just just trawled through the middle of the ground there, mate. Uh, that was good fun. I enjoyed a bit of waxing one-twos with some of my yeah. former teammates, but good to be a part of it. Awesome. Well, uh, the big moments from the weekend's AFL action, we're going to start the Things off with Friday Night Footy. Adelaide Collingwood, uh, I thought this was actually a really good game. Not just saying it because I'm a Crows supporter, but uh, the first three quarters, I thought, were very, very competitive. Yeah, it wasn't until the last probably 10, 15 minutes in the last quarter where Collingwood got the ascendancy there. They were able to kick a few goals, including Scotty Pendlebury, who kicked a number of goals playing in the midfield. Adelaide put on a really good performance, but I got a feel for uh, Brenton Sanderson as their coach. You, Joel, this is your team. You've been in a lot of these games throughout the year, not able to get the wins. The season, for me, is done. Six wins from 16 rounds. I think the maths there, you might be right, Sean. But uh, Collingwood's got Ball, Beam, Swan, Pendlebury, side bottom, all back in the side together for the first time in a long time, uninjured, and they're looking pretty good. This is Pendlebury pretty much sealing the deal for the Pies on Friday night. To Thomas. Well, Pendlebury could close it here and close it, he probably does. Let's have a look at game number two from the weekend. Uh, the Scott brothers have officially got no hair left. Uh, <laughs> North Melbourne versus the Brisbane Lions. I changed the channel when North Melbourne were up by 30 points. I thought it was all over. Likewise, uh, the other game was Carlton were playing St Kilda on the other station. That's why you would have thought, OK, well, this is a bit more interesting. But as it turns out, Brisbane come from behind. I watched the last 10 minutes. They swamped North Melbourne. Yet again, they let a last quarter lead fade out and lost another game. Now, you say it's frustrating for me to be a Crow supporter, but it's got to be worse to be a North Melbourne supporter. This is just become a norm every week. If they're beating a team by more than 20 or 30 points and it's towards the end of the game, you're still scared that they're going to lose. The interesting thing is that Brad Scott's never been questioned about his coaching and I've got to say that I'm going to start pointing the finger at you, Brad, because mm. you've lost too many games in a team that's expected or was expected to make the finals. When are the questions going to start coming out? How can you not get this team over the line in mm. those last quarters? I mean, he's got a bit of time to work it out. I think they signed him on a 10-year coaching deal, <laughs> so that'll be interesting. Let's have a look at the big man, who a lot of people wrote off earlier this year, Jonathan Brown kicking a couple of really, really good goals for the Brisbane Lions. And it goes to Rich, that devastating left foot. Can they get a spoil on Merritt? Had his moment. It bounces every which way. Buick the handball. Jonathan Brown! Oh. Come on down! <laughs> Which brings us to game number three. I'm not even going to talk about this one. I'll let uh, the former Freo captain, who's clearly happy with the win yesterday in the Derby, take it away, Shawnee. Fits like a glove, doesn't everybody? Well, a lot of people were throwing up different things at why West Coast should win this game. The fact is, Fremantle in fifth position for a reason. West Coast are outside the top eight for a reason as well. Their season has been a roller coaster ride. More downs than ups, to be perfectly honest. And it showed in the game that they threw the kitchen sink at the Dockers, but in the end, a team that had more consistency was able to play the four quarters consistently out. Kick that goals to uh, three in the last quarter. Totally outrun them or overrun them. And uh, hopefully for the mighty Purple Army, will be off to the grand final this year. Yeah, the blink of an eye all of a sudden, a close game. It was almost a 40-point lead at one stage there, which was pretty scary how fast the Dockers can move. I thought it was good to see uh, the big Pav uh, find some form after coming back from a big injury. Let's have a look at one of his goals. Pavlich, a little bit of icing on the cake. For the path. So they're the three games we're going to have a look at, but what about the Dream Team, Shawnee? I uh, thought it was uh, a few surprising results in there, although Stevie J is probably going to have a meeting with the Tribunal he, this week. He was outstanding, Stevie J, but once again, he's put himself in the situation. I'm sure his coach won't be happy with I. I believe you'll get a couple of weeks for this. Wow. Uh, Scotty Pendlebury was up there. Um, Isaac Smith from Hawthorne was one who had a pretty big game. And Jason Winderlick from Essendon kicked a couple of snaggers in yesterday's or so, uh, Sunday's win against the Bulldogs. Very impressive. And he's found some form and he's come back from two knee recos. No easy feat 
as uh, a wise man once told Only me. Only the greats can do that. Yep. I try it. And, uh, well, that's it for the Dream Team results. But what about the tipping? We move forward to this weekend, and there's a couple of cracking games, Shawnee. Yeah, to be honest, um, pretty predictable in the way we'll be tipping this week, except for two games. West Coast at home to Sydney. Always a tight tussle between those t- two teams. They hate I'm going to go for West Coast. What are you feeling? Oh, I think Sydney. I think, yeah, I don't know. West Coast, uh, they showed really good glimpses yesterday in the derby, but um, then just sort of fell away, and I think the class of the Swans will just get over the line. Fair call. And the other tight one will be Fremantle versus Richmond at the MCG. These two teams have had some tight tussles in recent times. Fremantle obviously trying to back up their derby win. Uh I've got to go for the Purple Army. Your thoughts? I can't write off the Tigers, though, because as much as they uh, they threw the F word out a couple of weeks ago, finals, uh, but it didn't happen. They got smashed by the Roos. But then last week we saw them go up to Cairns and get a really tight win there. So I think they want to play finals so badly that they might uh, they might surprise a few people this weekend. No doubt about it. Those two games will be the games of the round. And there we go. That's it for the tackle done and dusted for another week. I'm Joel Gelding, and this is Shannon Noll. We'll see you next week. No. 